So, you, if I haven't talked to you for a while, especially when I was speaking with you, you know, with whom I have shared the news of my upcoming book. Um, uh, into all family, co workers, doers, dreamers, thinkers, builders of a better world, uh, I genuinely hope it finds you well. If uh, the, you sense an ass coming, you're on the money. Because I hate asking for help. And it's been a character flaw. I'm, asking for, I'm going for the gus I'm asking for everything. I'm asking for time, effort, energy, money, attention, the authority to represent you, and eventually your vote. And why? Is the question you absolutely should be asking me right now. And why should you entrust me with all of these things? And that's because that's pretty much all I do and what I have been doing for the past few years, trying to answer the questions which, you know, regular people doing their jobs aren't necessarily going to ask because they have to do their jobs. But we know, and I think that this point of unity that I can bring to the people and the reason why this is called the call for unity is because I think that together, you know, we have the answers, we know what needs to be done, and yet we're still having this barrier that's keeping us from getting done what needs to get done, what we all want to get done, for the country of the people, for the people, and by the people. I want to make this country a country of truth and justice. I want to make truth and justice the American way. I have spent most of the last decade of my life um, attempting with some success to push the government to be better and to address the issues which face uh, the American people and the globe in general. Um, but there are some issues for which the American people need to address because the government is set up in a certain way and because uh, certain moneyed interests want us to stay going a certain way. And if I do what I can do, I can shift these moneyed interests to go our way so that we're investing in America, we're building for America, I have a vision for America, and that's what we need most right now, because we need to be able to see the better future, to be able to, regardless of whether it's going to hurt us or in the short term, if we see that in the long term it's going to help everybody, including my, our community, achieve all of the goals that we want them to achieve it will make people you know more willing to take short-term losses to achieve this greater vision that we put forward and this is possible we just the revolution that i really want people to have right now is you know the change in the mindset where we understand that we have so much we have you know worked for all of humankind to get us to a point where we have these powers that allow us to change the world in ways that our predecessors did not. We have, you know, tremendous resources to change who we are and what we are, but we need to focus ourselves. And I understand in what I, in what I'm promising to you is that the greatest change that you will see will come from me in terms of how I do things and how I interact with things. Um, and for a much smaller change that I'm going to ask you to do very specific things for across a whole bunch of people, this will change humanity, our concepts of what can be and what will be to a better world. Um, so. Uh, in terms of how I specifically can help, I mean, and even in the reason of this address, I'm saying to you the positives, the things that we can grow to be as a community, as unity of, you know, people, Jew, Christian, Muslim, black, white, uh, Indonesian, whatever, brown, we're people. You guys, you all look the same to me. People. Uh, and 
you know, prospering and living our lives and we live very similar lives for most of us. There are some very real differences. We have to talk about those, but for the most part, we want the same things. We want a healthy family. We want them to continue. We want to be able to move forward in the things that we like to do. And we like to see our uh, ideas come to fruition in the world. And I think that there's a place where we can kind of balance all of that, find a way to balance all of that. And especially with, you know, one of the goods of having what is a mass surveillance society is that we can learn about what humanity really is. And instead of us thinking and wondering and, you know, depending upon things in the past, we kind of verify, like, is this what people are doing? And all that has to be done responsibly. But we have this infrastructure to do it. We can do better. Um, and we haven't been doing uh, as good as we can be. Doing. I think that's something that we can all unify around. We can all understand. And we all um, together understand um, whether we're left or right or black or white or whatever that we need to do right. We need to do it better. And we need to talk and have better conversations around these things. and. There are people in between who have not our best interests in mind, or even if they do, they may be operating on old formulas. So we need to talk about these things. We need to move to the next generation. And we have very real questions we need to answer about AI and uh, labor and uh, what it means to society. Uh, but we would like to have a society where people work, people feel value. Um, people and this is also reduces crime uh, and gets people involved in things early we want to get a hold of kids we want to make sure that our society is not just talking about hey we're the best but measuring ourselves making sure that we do things to make sure that we are the best that educated um, people who understand and by best educated I don't mean just as the highest degree but have an understanding of farming and um, security and uh, economics and uh, energy and where it comes from and where food comes from, where energy comes from and where all the other people do things that we don't do that make our life possible so that we're appreciating those, we appreciate those things and then we're able to grab that opportunity. The opportunity before us is unique because you know, uh, our forefathers did some things really great, but didn't do all of the things great, which is you know, for maintenance, for, you know, all the things that produce our economy, you're supposed to produce, you're supposed to put more money back in. And you can see this in the subways. You can see this in a lot of the mass transit. You can see this in a lot of the roads in a lot of places in this country. We haven't been putting back that money in. We haven't been evolving these kinds of things. And we are mostly moving back and forth on literally 19th century technology is in stop technology from the 1800s and we're in the 21st century so this is a bold plan a multi-trillion dollar plan to move us to the next step of humankind of america of us you know reaping prosperity from uh all the opportunity, all of the work of our founding fathers, of our forefathers, the ones we know about, the ones we don't know about. Um, and now we have to really understand what we're about, who we are, and build ourselves to be better. And the sky is not even the limit. We have a bold future. But right now, there are very real risks. And the rest of this conversation is going to be about those risks. Um, and how we deal with them today as of 5, 17, 20, 24, what, um, and we're going to go with about five risks because, um, <laughs> you can only deal with so much so at a time, but I have an issue. I have, uh, plans for all of this. I need your help. I can tell you how you can help. Um, so that's it for today. Um, we're going to make a start for that and I'm going to start you about all the good things that can be all the risks that we need to take care of thank you for your time
I hope to work for you full time. Help me to do that.